Well, I had excitedly reported that we'd be getting Intel's XCSS technology on May 20th with the launch of Dolmen because that's what the game's producer said. I wasn't making it up. In an interview, he literally said, I think I can tell you, guess he was wrong about that part, but anyway, that everything, including the partnership with Intel, will be released in the day one patch when responding to the direct question, will XCSS support be available at launch? However, it's now clear that this will be added in a later update this summer. So that is disappointing news to see that that is uh, delayed, although I don't know if delay is the right word. Uh, we had it, you know, officially announced from the game's producer that it was coming May 20th, and now they're backing off till summer. But I guess this lines up better with what Intel has been saying along with its uh, release timeline for XCSS anyway. And to be honest, with Intel's GPUs at this point in a few laptops in South Korea, and then their stated plans are throughout the next few weeks going into the summer, we'll see them in OEM pre-built machines in China exclusively and only later expanding into other system integrators uh, throughout the world and then coming with the DIY market. Um, at, at this point, it looks to me like ARC is just going to be for system integrators for the most part. It's going to be kind of an afterthought as far as people buying them individually. Uh, I, I hope to be proven wrong, but at this point, that's kind of what it looks like. And um, yeah, everything points to it being mostly driver software issues causing a lot of these delays. Now, when we, when we do actually get XCSS, ah, um, <laughs> we're going to see at least these games. Uh, which have been officially announcing support uh, from Intel. So we will definitely get some titles here that do feature DLSS and we can compare, which will be nice, but it looks like we will have to wait a bit longer than May 20th. Now, in some other news, uh, Frank Azor, <laughs> who works for AMD, is an AMD employee. This is definitely AMD marketing. Um, is firing off on Twitter about the price to performance and performance per watt advantage of AMD GPUs. Now, this is definitely marketing materials, so ah, we don't want to dwell too much on it here. Um, but at least in AMD's claims, they have taken pricing from May 10th, 2022 at Newegg, looking at the lowest price things were available on that date uh, at Newegg, and they were comparing uh, 1080p medium on their low end, like their RX 6400 and GTX 1050 Ti, and I believe this would also include your 6500 XT and GTX 1650. Uh, 1080p max, um, they're going with their 6600, 60, uh, 650 XT, jumping up to 1440p max, we got like our 6700 XT versus the 3060 Ti, all of that. Anyway, they're, they're claiming a price to performance win here. Um, in all of these, but they're not saying which games they tested, so <laughs> uh, that might be why you might, uh, along with me, question, okay, at 4K max, the 6950 XT uh, having um, more FPS, 105 FPS versus 91 against the RTX 3090, I mean, yeah, in some games that is true, but on average... Uh, so anyway, take this for what it is, but what I'm excited about here is less about these details, but just about the fact that I do think that AMD's approach should be trying to give a better value. Now, unfortunately, I like to see them target an even better value than they are here, because again, they do need to acknowledge the fact that yes, FSR 2.0 came out, but it's in one game right now versus DLSS in a lot of games, and they still have the deficiency in ray tracing performance. So they do have the win in performance per watt, that is true. Um, but I do think for somebody buying right now, uh, you do need to take those other factors into consideration, and I would like to see, uh, you know, uh, even better pricing advantages, and especially given what the, you know, actual frame rate differences are on average in a wider selection of games. Um, now, uh, this is kind of important if you're still on a GeForce 600 or 700, so I'm going to announce it right here. I guess there was a newly discovered security vulnerability, so NVIDIA is release releasing an update just to patch those security issues, and it's nice to see them do that. It's nice to see them um, offer, sec offer security support. Uh, for GPUs that are that old. No offense to any of you who still have one. Now, in the world of fancy code names, we've got a little bit of an update. So if you start hearing about Plum Bonito, 
<laughs> that could be referring to uh, the RX 7000's Navi 31, that is the top end RDNA 3, um, as its possible code name. Where is this coming from? Well, a uh, leaker who has, again, got things right in the past, so we should actually possibly listen, Kepler, uh, is claiming uh, Plum Bonito equals Navi 31 ASIC. Um, now, there's a question mark at the end here, so I wouldn't say that this is a for sure thing. We've got Gemini possibly being the code name for the Navi 31 board, and we've got GFX 1200 possibly being Navi 41, uh, which would be interesting, although that is a long way off. So if you want to compare that, uh, uh, the video cards article I'll, I've got here, which of course I'll link in the description as usual, is now giving us some of our code names if you are interested. Uh, lining up here with Plumbo Nito st slotted in there for our Navi 31. Now, we actually could be seeing the RTX 4090 Ti right here, although just the cooler, not the actual full design, and this would be the Founders Edition. Where is this coming from? The Chip Hell Forum. Now, this actually also happened for the 3000 series, when uh, about three months before the launch. So this that is interesting, uh, given the rumors of you know our possible uh, July release schedule for the top end uh, RTX 40 GPUs. Now, this does seem to indicate that the overall cooler design is uh, for the Founders Edition is going to be extremely close to the uh, 3000 series high end designs. But the base plate is much larger, as confirmed against photos from the Tech Power Up RTX 3090 Ti review. And uh, so I think that would allow better uh, cooling, or, or different cooling at least, of the memory modules there. And again, the photos do include the RTX 4090 Ti branding on that. So um, anyway, if this is real, which it very well might not be, <laughs> Uh, these are pretty low-res photos, so who knows? Uh, but that would indicate that, uh, you know, we'd be seeing, like I said, similar cooling design, but uh, increased backplate and such. Anyway, uh, just a quick note. Uh, on the note of handheld gaming PC consoles, uh, as Steam Deck competitors, G GDP, or isn't it GPD? <laughs> they got that wrong, they're GDP. No, it's not the gross domestic product, it's GPD. <laughs> <laughs> have their batch of Ryzen 7600 UAPUs. That is exciting because those are more powerful than what is in the Steam Deck. So I think the um, Steam Deck competitors, as I said when a and Neo announced one of these a few uh, a week ago or so and I talked about it, I think the most exciting thing about Steam Deck competitors will be when they launch higher end models. Also, maybe you can just actually buy one because the Steam Deck who knows when we can actually get our hands on one of those. And last thing is, is there any interest in me uh, benchmarking my GPUs in Unreal Engine 5? It looks like EasyBench uh, has an Unreal Engine 5 benchmark now that does feature ray tracing, but it's designed as an absolute stress test, um, meaning this isn't, this is supposed to be a worst case scenario rather than a, um, you know, what we should realistically expect from a, a well-optimized Unreal Engine 5 game. So this could be pretty demanding, but this should be free on Steam. So anyway, I'm, I'm interested in at least downloading it for myself. May or may not post content on, on the channel, unless maybe you guys are interested in that. Uh, kind of short one today, but uh, hopefully this was interesting and I hope you have an excellent day.